Welcome back everybody to Forza Motorsport, so we're continue, uh, starting even a uh, brand new tour after finishing off the mid-engine tour, which for some reason has seemingly been extended by a few days. But yeah, we're going to be starting off the Mustang tour today, and uh, yeah, it's the first championship is last of the pony cars. So uh, yeah, let's see uh, what this uh, championship is going to be all about. The Ford Mustang stands as an icon of American automotive culture, revered for its storied history and enduring legacy. Since its inception in 1964, the Mustang has embodied the spirit of freedom and exhilaration. From its role in defining the pony car segment to its legendary status among tuners and racers, the Mustang has continually evolved, staying relevant to modern markets yet true to its heritage. With Ford's commitment to affordable performance, the Mustang ensures that driving thrills are accessible to all who seek them. Yeah, sorry there, I don't know why the uh, subtitles had vanished. I don't remember ever taking them off, but there we go. Um, yeah, so uh, we've only got one car to choose from, and that is the car that was on the uh, main image. And that is the uh, 2014 Ford Mustang, which I already own. So, uh, yeah, fairly decent stats for this all around. And, uh, yeah, 486 horsepower and 418 pound-speed of torque from its 5-litre V8. Now, there is a dark horse that's also been added to this game that has slightly more power. But, yeah, that's still a decent amount. And, yeah, it weighs quite a bit, 3,827 pounds, but you still have a lot of power at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, get into the first race which is at Sunset Peninsula which has also been added to this game recently for five laps and as per usual we will not upgrade the car for the first race just to see what it is capable of in stock form so yeah you can get a, uh, a car for uh, doing this entire tour by the way it's a Celine S302 it's a, basically a heavily modified Following Mustang by the looks of things, but I haven't time. actually uh, got it yet. You can get it via another means if you uh, want to, um, you know, skip ahead basically, because this entire tour is not open to be completed right now. So if you do 10 of the races in the um, Mustang multiplayer races that are out there, then you will get this lien via those means as well. So, um, yeah, looks like a, a pretty formidable car, so I am looking forward to a eventually getting my hands on it whether or not it's going to be via doing this tour or via doing those races I don't know but regardless it should be a pretty fun car to get a hold of especially since I am a fan of Mustangs in all types of varieties so um, yeah I'm looking forward to trying it out but as far as Mustangs go this is a pretty good one uh, as far as you know standard GT versions are uh, concerned See, I've only been on this uh, track once so far, and that was for a, uh, a video where we took a drift car around, so, uh, yeah, first proper race. There is a fair bit of traffic on the go here. Hopefully the game realised I was being pushed down, so therefore I had to go to take a uh, slightly alternate route. AI is struggling with that corner there, unfortunately, which is not making this the most competitive of races. Yeah, the engine to this sounds glorious. Whether or not we're going to get more Mustangs like this in the future, with you know electric electric cars coming around and. Seemingly hydrogen powered cars not far off either, then uh, yeah. This could very well, like the here, championship title says, be the last of the pony cars. Period. Not just the last one out there, because obviously Camaro is no longer a thing, and from Chevrolet, and the Challenger and Charger are long dead from um, Dodge. Which surprising because I don't think Dodd makes very many cars anymore um, so to kill off two of their you know, well known vehicles is kind of surprising but then they are owned by Stellantis which is like a big car company group you know, made up of like Fiat and Alfa Romeo and all sorts of others so uh, yeah and they're uh, pretty much getting failing 
miserably at the moment, so um, I expect them to lean on the heritage of some of their brand names quite heavily to try and turn things around at some point. So if there are going to be new charges or challenges, then uh, they would probably be electrified. Quite cool if the charger was electrified, considering you know what you do for an electric car, you charge it. So you know you could always spin that name around to work, work very nicely as an EV. Obviously, it's not the most powerful muscle car on this uh, championship here. These Camaros can have a hell of a lot more than we do. kind of see why the uh, Camaro kind of fell by the wayside, and the Challenger as well to be honest, because yeah, they kind of got really to the point where they were as great as they were ever going to be. The Challenger, the Charger, Challenger um, got to, you know, uh, the Hellcat, and then you had the Demon version, and quite frankly, where do you go from there? It's very hard to do so, especially with that chassis and that, that general um, version of that Challenger. Camaro, yeah, excellent track weapon for a, is a muscle car, but three remaining. Again, it kind of reached its limits. I still feel like the Charger could have gone in new places, but not much. But as far as saloon cars go, it was a pretty uh, good one. Is one of the most powerful ones out there with the uh, Hellcat engine. Those kind of cars have, though, outside of the Camaro, is the lack of sophistication. The Challenger and the Charger were really rather underwhelming in terms of what they could do in terms of handling and performance, but, well, handling and braking more than you know, performance. But straight line speed were great, but that's pretty much all they could do. Whereas the Camaro was very good in terms of handling, very good in terms of braking. Far more sophisticated underneath, and uh, yeah, still packed quite a punch in terms of horsepower. Maybe not quite as much as the Hellcat Challenger and Charger, but not a million miles off. And Mustang have been doing their own thing really for a lot of the time, but I think the Mustang has generally been the more consistent across all of its different variants. Standard GT is very good. So your dark horse, and then you've got your Celine modified ones, and then you've also got your all track weapons like the Shelby GT 350R and the uh, mightily powerful GT 500. So it's yeah, I just feel like the Stankers play to its strengths really well across several different variants. This car's not perfect in terms of handling, it is obviously the base, powerful version of the uh, Mustang, in terms of V8 versions. Still will be interesting to see what the uh, EcoBoost Mustang is like to drive on a game. Which once again brings me back to my uh, you know, um, options list kind of way of doing a car list. Seven different variants of, say, Mustang or Camaro, split into different vehicles in a showroom. Pick a Camaro, a base one, as is, and then spec it up from there. If you want the ZL1 1 LE version, then go ahead. If you want the SS version, then go ahead with that. Same with this, if you want the V8 version or the EcoBoost version, pick from one of those. 
it seems like I've got a very, way more versatile way of doing things than clogging up a showroom on a, uh, or a car list on a game. Multiple variants of the same car. Glad that this track is back in the game. It did take me a while to remember it when I first got on it. Or until I got on it, that is. It took me until the first corner for me to remember it, after having a flashback. To play a really catastrophic mistake of putting the controller down to a lap early. This car though does have its issues, we've had some this year. issues at times, so definitely going to improve from end grip. Could be just that I'm pushing it a little bit too hard, but the rear end does seem to stick like glue to the road, to the road so you'd expect the uh, front end to follow suit, but this is not the case. straight line than Camaro up front. Not enough to uh, get second place, but third is really rather quite good for a uh, stock car on one of these races, usually we are lower than that. So that's a good uh, starting position for this car in this championship. Great race. Yeah, there we go, 23 points to start with, and considering they were seem somehow in A-class but lower PI, I don't know how that works, um, yeah, did pretty well there. So uh, let's uh, move on to the second race, but before we do that, let's get into the upgrade shop. Right, so we saw what issues this car had at times, namely, um, you know, front end grip was not particularly great. Obviously we do not have a huge amount of PI to play with, we only have 21, so um, yeah, we're going to mainly concentrate on the handling. Um, so both tyres at the front and rear can get upgraded. We'll knock out some weight with the drive line to make up for the wider tyres, because they do add weight. We'll do the same with the hood, that'll knock off £7. Add many a different wing on this uh, car. Uh, we can also add bumper, rear bumper. Rear bumper also lightens the car and it also improves the handling and braking because it, uh, as it says on the info, I think it says, yeah, make a major change to the rear bumper to decrease lift and increase the load over the rear wheels at speed. So, uh, yeah, that's always a worthwhile upgrade if you if the car has it. Um, brakes. Can't do those. The springs. Yeah, we'll do those just to add a little bit more control. And we'll lighten the load of the car a little bit more. So, yeah, we're lighter, lower, and grippier. So, yeah, that's a decent amount of upgrades. Obviously, it's not a huge amount, but at the end of the day, we only had a few PI to play with. Let's get on to the second race where we're at Sebring International Raceway for three laps. So, not a particularly long one, but Sebring is always a fun circuit, uh, especially now that they've upgraded how uh, upgraded the uh, physics of the track to uh, yeah, emphasise how bumpy the uh, track Running actually is in parts. In which it makes it quite scary at times to go quite quickly at certain tracks. points. So, uh, yeah definitely have to keep yourself on your toes on those parts. Flat the fuel all the way down. And there we go. Right. Let's see what we can do.
going to be much faster in terms of acceleration, but we will be able to use our power more now that we've got that grip and improve the suspension. The uh, slight reduction in weight will obviously help to, to a certain extent. Might not help all that much to 60 in terms of acceleration, but probably definitely to 100. Where weight does seem to take more of a uh, hold on the car's ability to accelerate. Especially since you know, the faster you go in, they've got more aerodynamic forces working against you, so the less that you weigh in terms of the car overall does help. Oh dear. I have no idea if that was my fault or not. At least I didn't get a penalty at the very least. Could have done with definitely upgrading the brakes, but really did not have enough PI for that. The car is able to stop better just because it is grippier. And weighing less also means I've got less momentum to deal with. Brakes are still not the best. Lead over fifth, but fourth, third, and beyond are still quite some way away. I think the Camaro that was in second in the last race is in third this time round, so if we can get ahead of them. Again, why are they failing so much? It's costing me a podium position at this rate. Back. 
draft off yet again. This has been a bit of a bad luck race to be honest. Even the brakes just aren't good enough for this circuit or I'm not good enough at using them or whatever but regardless yeah. Oh dear, I'm not concentrating then. There's nothing going to be a uh, amount of time between me and fourth. A bit un underwhelming to be honest, that's going to cost us um, probably our third position in the championship overall there. Unfortunate to say the least. No, we are clinging on to third still, but we are now five points behind second and ten points behind first. So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of catching up to do, but I f think we could still well uh, win the championship if we uh, get a couple of wins in, but that's a big if. But nonetheless, Thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.